Hey everybody, welcome back to the Rock Live podcast. I am here back with Pastor Dan Good himself. Good to be back with y'all. Yeah, very excited. You know, um, we'll start off, Pastor Dan, you just got back and we are very excited to have you back at the Rock, but why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about your trip and... Man, we uh, we took two weeks and we started at the beach and uh, then we went up to the mountains and um, we've we've usually done one or the other you know, for a vacation, but this was like, let's, let's just have it all because in California, you know, you can, you can have it all. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we pay the high taxes and put up with the stuff we do to live here. But, um, man, it was, uh, it was amazing. Um, Jess and I, while we were away, celebrated 23 years of marriage. Praise God. Yeah. And we did that at the beach. So, um, we were in Santa Barbara area and, uh, actually went to Santa Barbara downtown, had some of the best food I've ever had in my life. Oh my gosh, um, Pastor Jessica, she she continues to tell me like you don't talk about my food the way you talked about that. Food. I'm like, well, you don't have a Michelin star, right? you know. So, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, it's like it, it it's crazy, but yeah, we we had a great time. And um, the first week we really didn't do much. We just kind of chilled at the beach. Mm. You know, I took out the paddleboard once I think on the ocean, and uh, you know. Um, there's a, a beach there that had these uh, platforms you could swim out to. So the kids would swim out to the platforms and hang out. And so it was fun. Um, and then uh, we drove up to Mammoth and uh, on the way it was 116 degrees Oof. in the desert as we drove yeah. through, which I, you know, I've, I've heard about temperatures that hot and I've seen it and been like, I'm not going there, you know, cause where we're at, I think, you know, the, it, it's like blazing, super hot record setting when it's like 109 you yeah. know, yeah. but to, to kick that up to 116, um, we did a rest stop. Uh, and when I stepped out of the car, it literally stung me. I was just like, this is heat I've never experienced before. So, I mean, I, I had heard that in Death Valley, someone died yeah. being out in that heat. And it's no wonder, you know, uh, I just think about the body is not meant to be in, in those sorts of extreme temperatures. So kind of crazy. But then we went up, uh, had a beautiful time in Mammoth. Um, I think the high was 85 the whole time. It's dry up there, but um, it's just gorgeous. Uh, the mountains and that. We hiked literally every day. Uh, there was one day the kids were like, we're done hiking. So Pastor Jess and I went on our own and hiked and uh, just had a great time. Um, there's tons of lakes up there. So I took the paddle boards out and I uh, had a great time out on the lakes, just having fun and, um, you know, enjoying ourselves. So it was it was great. We came back physically tired, but uh, spiritually renewed. And I don't know, there's something about creation yeah. that when you get out in it, whether it's the ocean or the mountains or a lake or a tree or, you know, that sort of thing. I mean, big rocks. I get this picture of my kids. Uh, they all kind of scrambled up this rock where there was a viewpoint. And I've gotten a picture of them uh, with anybody who's familiar with Mammoth Lakes area. Crystal Crag is in the background. I mean, it's just, it's unreal. You know, it's like one of those epic, uh, you know, People would call it Insta worthy, even though I'm not really on social media. Yeah. You know, I have an account, but I don't, I just pop in every now and then to see what's going on. I go, oh yeah, same old stuff. <laughs> Jump back off. But, um, but yeah, I mean, just one of those epic pictures. I, I got this picture of my kids up on this rock and, uh, it's just, those, those are the kind of the moments that, uh, you know, bring you back to a place of, you know, just peace and, and realizing how big God is. I remember we were going up in the back country of Yosemite and, uh, we're going up the Tioga Pass and as we're driving up, I just had to stop because it, it, the road all of a sudden, and, and we, in my own eyes, just became small. Yeah. Because these massive granite-faced mountains, and, and uh, I mean, just, it was like we were driving into giant land, you know? Like, um, and that, that stretch of road there, um, it's just one of those massive, uh, I mean, you're, you're, you're climbing up these hills up, you know, you're going up to, I think, gosh, 8,000, 10,000 feet, somewhere up there, you know, you're, you're going over this pass and, um, and it's just wild, you know? And I told Jess, I said, man, look how big God is. Yeah. He made all this, you know? And then, and then you get into Yosemite up there and there's these long meadows, green rocks, trees, rivers flowing through. And it's just like God's country. You know, yeah. you can just see God's fingerprints all over it. So yeah. yeah, we had a we had a, a wonderful time away, but we're we're glad to be home. Amen, amen. Yeah. Well, we're we're glad to have you. You know, it's funny. I I remember telling Melissa, uh, going to National Park even last year. It was like, you know, you see things that are built that are beautiful, mm -hmm. and you can. But when you see what God has built, it oh, yeah. just brings a different kind of awe 
to what you're looking at. And it's like, man, it's just such an emotional thing because the beauty of what God has created yeah. is just far beyond uh, what we can do as humans, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, yeah, just it's such a special thing. And so, Pastor Dan, we're really uh, excited to have you back. Yeah. Um, you know, the message this last weekend was absolutely phenomenal. Thank I know you. you always joke around um, saying, you know, people say when you when you take off, hey, you know, get refreshed because when you come back, it's that level. You know, one of the great things about uh, being here at The Rock is the word is always a solid word. You know, it's always exceptional. But this last weekend, um, you know, going back into the book of Romans, it was really exciting to get back into that. And the word was so beautiful talking about remarkable faith. Yeah. I think, yeah. you know, a topic that's really important in the world that we live in today sure. and seeing everything that's going on, there's so much uncertainty, right. Yeah. That we're yeah. facing here in this world. Um, we have a, uh, an election that's getting ready to come up. We got wars all over the world, so many different things. And so to be uh, talking about, you know, just God's timing in, in this part of the message, the remarkable faith, I think it's so important. And then the responsibility that uh, it plays on us to to be able to live in that kind of faith. Yeah. And so do you want to kind of just, um, as you were diving into this message and preparing for it, and when you were landing on that title, what was it that God was kind of, the, the, the path that God was taking you on in that uh, yeah. message? You know, um, it, preaching line upon line and precept upon precept, it's, uh, you know, Pastor Paul made mention of this when he, when he preached on Romans, and that is, is that, um, you never want to get so narrow focused on one verse that you miss the overarching emphasis of what's being spoken in, yeah. the, in the text, because it's one letter. It, it's one cohesive thought. There was something that the Apostle Paul had on his heart that he wanted to reach this, this church in Rome with. He wanted to encourage them. Uh, obviously, like most of the books, the, the first part's very theological, second part's very practical, and um, there were some things that he knew um, from their reputation about this church that they needed to understand and they needed to hear and not having the background, um, you know, and it's a mixed congregation, obviously. There's Jews as well as proselytes, as well as now people are getting saved, you know, Gentiles are coming into the kingdom. And so, um, you know, the book of Romans, he, he weaves in and out uh, those without the law, those with the law, uh, you know, and, and um, talks about creation's witness, which if you read the book of Acts, you'll find that the apostle, when he was with, like, uh, the Greeks, you know, he was there in Greece, uh, he's on Mars Hill, he's preaching to a people, but he doesn't do what he does in the synagogues. Yeah. He doesn't start at the prophets, he doesn't open the scrolls, he doesn't do any of that kind of stuff and talk to them about our fathers and, and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Moses and, and, you know, Joshua. He doesn't go into any of that. He starts with, again, creation's witness, that we worship those things which we thought we knew we were groping about, though God was never far from us. And he, he goes back to creation. And so in Romans, actually, we're going to see this soon in chapter 1, he goes to creation and talks about that witness, I believe, for the segment of the people that are Gentiles. But then later on in chapter 4, you find him into uh, Abraham, talking about faith, Yeah. right? But all of us, whether we're under the law or out from underneath the law, we all have this issue of sin. Yeah. But what was remarkable was that people were talking about their faith all over the world. And, and you think about Rome. I, I think about in our day and age, there's cities like Los Angeles, cities like New York, uh, you know, Washington, D.C., Paris, uh, London. You know, there's some world-renowned cities, Tokyo. You know, that, that if you mention those cities, people all over the world are going to say, oh, yeah, you know, we, we know something about that city simply because they're notable in some way. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what are they known for? You know, whether it be fashion, uh, whether it be politics, whether it be uh, innovation. You know, if I say, um, you know, uh, certain cities like the Silicon Valley, uh, you know, and then Tel Aviv, they're going to be known for business and, and, you know, innovation and things like that. You know, so what are these cities known for? Some cities are known for, uh, you know, skiing or outdoor sports. If I mention Vail. Colorado, you know, I mean, people are just, oh, skiing, right? They're going to yeah. be, they're going to be right there in a place and they're going to have a, a, uh, a image in their mind, you know, of, of what they're thinking about. Brian Head, Utah, you know, people are going to think, oh yeah, snow, right? That's, that's where they're going in their mind. So here, most of the time when you think of Rome, you think of capital city, 
you think of government, you think of this worldwide power, right? And yet, the Apostle Paul, when he's talking to this people in this great city, he doesn't mention the politics or the, uh, you know, the social things that were going on in that time. He says, hey, people are talking about your faith. Yeah. You know, it was it was really notable, and that jumped out at me because I, I would imagine the fact that the Apostle Paul is desiring to see them, he's heard about their faith, uh, this is the launching point. This, this is something that he's going to jump off of because of your faith, Let's talk about these things. Let's talk about creation. Let's talk about faith that Abraham had. Let's talk about, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's all throughout the book of Romans. You know, it's not a book that maybe a lot of times people think of as far as that. Even the gifts, the administrative gifts are in there. Uh, you know, a lot of times people go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 14 for those gifts, but they, they miss out on the place in the body that Romans really talks about those things and even expands the work of the Spirit in believers' lives. Yeah. And so there's some really neat things that are taking place, all because the Apostle Paul heard, hey, you guys have faith. And yeah. that was kind of the inception of this message. And then, you know, what was remarkable about it? Well, if you back up, people that have grace and people that have peace are remarkable to the world. Yeah, you know, so yeah, we'll get into grace and peace later on, but I, I just love the way that that starts off because obviously in order to live a life of remarkable faith, you have to have the peace of God. Yeah. You have to have the grace of God. And I think, you know, I love when you, when you talk about this message and you start off, you, you make sure that, you know, this isn't just a salutation. This is not just a way to start off the paragraph in yeah. your greeting, yeah. right? This is a way of understanding the empowerment that is giving to, given to you mm -hmm. in order to have a remarkable faith. Right? right. And so, um, you know, one of the things that you talked about and I really want to get into because it's so important when we look at the times that we're living in right now, there's a lot of headlines. Oh, sure. right. And you had Gosh. mentioned in your message, like, what do we want the headlines to be? Right. Do we want it to be the, the, the things that are that are uh, drawing people away from God? Do we want the headlines to be the, the focal points of sin or uh, the fallouts of man yeah. or whatever the case may be? Or do we want to shine so bright that Paul says, hey, what I hear about you is the remarkable faith. Yeah. And so um, I really want you to kind of uh, talk about this because it's so easy to look at the headlines right now. And especially recently with, you know, I, I'm not saying we have to get into all the details, but we we do know that there's been a lot of headlines right now about yeah. the church. And so the importance that we play in shining so bright that we can take away from those negative headlines. Yeah, it seems like if you look through recent church history, yeah, there have been these cycles where the church grows, uh, things are, are looking good, and then um, you know these scandals break, and they're they're definitely newsworthy, and and obviously a world that's embittered and that is accusatory and wants to call down the church is going to jump on those things. Yeah. Uh, as well, gossips and people that, um, you know, are interested in intrigue and things like that, they're going to want to hear about those things. So definitely we know that they're going to even take those things and, and, and blow them out of proportion. You know, there are certain things that when I've looked at, at uh, certain aspects of the headlines, I've had to wade through, okay, what is the truth? Uh, and then what is the error? You know, wh where, are they, where are they reporting what's actually going on? And then when I take a look at this, departing myself from the emotion or the frustration or even the discouragement of it. It, it. No one wants to see a pastor fall. Yeah. You know, no one wants to see a leader uh, go into a moral failure. And, and yet when we hear about these things, people dive on it. And, um, you know, there's, there's been even uh, church organizations, large ones, um, you know, uh, and, and not just one. I, I know that, that people could single in on one in their thinking, but a, it's not just one. It, it goes from the conservative spectrum all the way into the, uh, you know, charismatic, Pentecostal. Um, you know, the, it, it's across the board. Even even the ultra-religious that, that some people don't even think is is Christian, but it is. You know, there are, there are some very godly, wonderful people in some of these denominations that are major world denominations that if you if you look at them people would say they're Christian um, you know however in, in within all of these organizations we see failures yeah and, and the reason why is because obviously 
man is involved. Yeah. And, and people are sinful, and they're going to do the wrong thing. We're, we're born into sin. We're fighting the good fight of faith. And again, that's where the book of Romans gives us those keys to overcome sin. And, and so in those, in those areas where we see people failing and where we see those failures, the world is going to jump on those things. And that was never God's intent for us to uh, be remarkable in those ways, you know? Yeah. And yet the world is going to take those things and run with it and, and make that the headline. Um, I, I do think, though, the good news is, in some ways, we're starting to see more and more uh, movies, actually, being made about remarkable faith. Yeah. You know, um, I, I had just heard a report that Amazon has linked up with another organization, and um, it's kind of a new thing that's come out. There's some key players from different areas coming in, uh, different uh, companies that have come together and have, have built this uh, new thing with Amazon where they're going to start putting out uh, faith-based, um, encouraging films. And I think that's, that's good news that they're, they're looking for these stories that, that are remarkable. Yeah. You know, Pastor Dan, I think one of the things that, that this shows because of the world that we live in today, it is so media driven, Sure, right? It's too easy to get information out there. Yeah. And then it's, it's impossible to take it away once it's out there. Oh, it's yeah. You're right. Done. So the, the emphasis really making sure that the things that we do, understanding, we 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 know as Christians, the world's always watching. Yeah. But I think that there needs to be a different level of understanding when we look at the way that the world operates right now with social media, with uh, with how easy it is to get news article out there, everything at our fingertips. Oh, for sure. Right here, and just understanding that the life that we live, and I think that's where we, as we break into some of these things that you talked about, these points the importance of living our life in a way of remarkable faith and, and, and trusting in God in these areas because it's too easy, yeah. right, yeah. to get the negative out there. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, one, one of the first things that you talked about is being a saint. Being and I, a saint. I, I really want to dive into that because one of the things that you talked about is, you know, you talked about this weekend was um, too many times people think that there has to be a certain level of of holiness or certain position in church in order to classify uh, ourselves as a saint right but not really necessarily seeing ourselves the way that god sees us and so do you mind pulling into that a little bit more talking about that definition of saint and what that means as a christian when you say yes to jesus you had talked about as soon as you become born again Mm -hmm. you take on the position of being a saint yeah, and I, and I think that's where we, we try and teach in profound simplicity. The reason why is because if things are complicated or we don't understand them, we'll never operate in them, right? Yeah. So no one will be a saint if they don't know what a saint is. Yeah. But if we complicate it by saying, hey, here's a list of do's and don'ts in order to be holy, then we've missed it, you know? And I think that's where when uh, you take a look, again, at, at certain teachings and things like that, they'll tell you, well, uh, women can't wear makeup in order to be holy. They can't wear pants in order to be holy. Um, you know, uh, for, for, for men, they, they would have a, a list of things, you know, your hair has to be cut a certain way, or you have to wear a suit. And, and I mean, when we get on those external things, we miss what holiness really is all about. Um, you know, if it's just a list of do's and don'ts, and that doesn't mean that some of those do's and don'ts wouldn't be included in a holy life. Yeah. Right. Uh, like, I think a great, for instance, don't don't look at perverse things, you know. OK, um, that's part of living holy. Right. Yeah. But it's not in itself what holiness really is in its essence. And so that's where if we can simplify the understanding of what it is and, and, and obviously with God, things can be so deep and profound and complex because it's God. Yeah. Right. There's there's a, an element of mystery to it. And yet I don't think God wanted us to miss it. Yeah. And, and that's why when we take a look at what holy is, we understand from the examples throughout the scriptures of what it is based on what God does and what he says about it. So we can see that holiness is a separation and it's a special position that, that we have with God that, that's exclusive, that, that we're separate from the world, we're exclusive for God, and, and that we're special to God. In the same way, God is separate from everything else and everyone else. There's no one like him. Uh, he is exclusive to us. He's, he says, I am your God. Yeah. Right? You'll be my people, but I'll be your God. 
And, and it's a special relationship that we have with God. And I think when we understand those terms, we can understand that, you know, any family, there might be people that have special connections. You know, my daughter with my dad, they had a special connection. Yeah. She just loved her grandpa more than any, anybody else. And he loved her more than anybody else. <laughs> they had a special connection. Yeah. I mean, she, she was the only girl out of all the grandkids on that side and uh, was the first grandkid. And so obviously they're going to have a special connection. And it's not that my dad loved my boys any less or my brother's boys any less. It was just, hey, there's a special relationship here, you know. And when I think about that, I think about God with his people. You know, he, he separated Israel from the nations of the world. He called Abraham out. Uh, you know, when, when Israel went down to Egypt, he called them out of Egypt for a purpose, not to go to the promised land. Yeah. It was to be with himself. And I think when we understand that relationship, that, A, you're special to me. I want to be with you, right? That's, that's why I believe that the Holy Spirit in our present time is so important because there's a special relationship. Yeah. It, you, you're saved not to go to heaven. You're saved to be with God. Yeah. And you don't have to wait till heaven for that. God loves you so much and thinks you're so special and unique that he gives you, what? The holy, yeah. special, exclusive spirit. Well, you know, it's interesting, Pastor Dan. You know, if, if you even look at, like, in, in Europe, they still have the king. They still have princes. Yeah. They still have all of those things, right? So to live a certain proper life that is acceptable to be a prince, yeah. right? You don't live that life so that you can become a prince. You you change the the way that you live life because you're already a prince. You are. And I think that's where you're understanding you're already a saint. Right. Right. So the sin and the things of this world that you start to work on come out because you understand that you are a saint. Right. Right. You don't do these things to become a saint. And I think that I when you understand the identity that you are in Christ Jesus, it makes you want to live yeah. a different life. Because like you talked about, uh, that, that we are holy because he is holy. Right. Right. And so when we understand the life that we're living is a reflection of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right. When we train up our children as they're little, those are things that we tell them. Right. What you do reflects me mm. as a parent. Yeah. Right. And when we can understand that the life that we live is a reflection of who God is to the world. Right. That, that we're showing then it would then it causes us to want to live and stay out of the headlines. Yeah. A different way because we understand the life that we live. And so I just thought that was it was such a good point because I, so many times I think people don't realize who they are, their identity, right? They see Pastor Dan as the saint. And yeah. then everybody else is second class. Is second yeah. class. Or, or because you're a pastor. Yeah, no, they, there may be a ministry calling that is different. And, uh, you know, definitely God separates people for work that he calls them to do. Um, and, and I believe that everybody has a specific calling that they are, separated unto that's a holy calling and, yeah. and that holy calling may be being a janitor in a school because they're going to reach kids or faculty or you know people that they come across um and and then others yeah they might be separated like paul and barnabas were to be missionaries yeah uh you know that's the work that god called them and separated them for uh for me yeah it's to be a pastor um but that doesn't mean that the janitor calling the single mom calling the you know uh, yeah uh, those types of things that, that people are called to, you know, um, is any less than our calling. If, if, if people will look at their calling and be separate unto it, then there are rewards in heaven. And, and I believe, honestly, there's probably going to be some, some moms and some, you know, janitors and people that accountants, and you know, all that kind of stuff that have more rewards in heaven because they, they faithfully fulfilled their calling to a greater level than I did my calling. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they, they just sank themselves into it. They were a witness. I mean, there's people I talk to that when I hear what they're doing in the marketplace or in business or in the community and things like that, I wonder, am I saved? <laughs> you know, because it's like, I'm not doing all that, you know? <laughs> I mean, a different level of witness. Uh, absolutely. Right. Cause you're in this lost and fallen world. Yeah. Having to make sure every day 
that you that you are putting on Christ and being a reflection of him. I mean, not every evangelist has a platform. They've got a desk. They've got a break room. They've got a park bench, you know, that they're reaching people with, uh, you know, gymnasiums and things like that where people are going to work out, and they see the same people week after week, and they just provide a witness. There are people that I will never reach from my pulpit, people that are never going to listen to this podcast, people that are never going to come to my church, and yet the saints— going out into their calling are going to reach exponentially more people yeah. than I'll ever reach. Yeah. And yet people want to pat me on the back. And it's yeah. Like, no, that's not the way it is. You know, we're all saints. We're all called. We're all chosen. We're all separated into a work. And as we do that, my goodness, it's remarkable. Yeah. No, that's amazing. What, which brings to the second point you talked about was grace, grace, right? Because as you said, we all have a calling, but God has given us the grace to fulfill that calling. Yeah. And so we talk a lot about grace here at the church, God's sovereign divine ability to get the job done on our behalf when we can't do it, his power in us to do what his truth demands of us. And so let's, let's dive into that because again, we started off grace and peace to you. Yeah. You know, so here we are understanding the grace of God that he has given us. Yeah. Right. Again, this, the, the simplified version of that whole definition is empowerment. Yeah. Right? Because in our calling and in being holy, we find a lack in us because we can't do it. Yeah. Right? The sin raises up. And, and I think, again, the, the overarching theme when you look at the book of Romans, the Apostle Paul in chapters 6, 7, and 8 spends a long time on this. Yeah. You know, and, and 8 is obviously the, the climax of the understanding to where, you know, we, we get to, and that's why they call it the great eight, is because of that, that understanding that we are triumphant in Christ, that we, we have overcome, we're more than conquerors, God's working everything together for good. Um, you know, we, we have to, to live in that area, but we realize that there's a struggle within that, is, and that's our weakness. Yeah. And because of the weakness of the flesh, because, uh, you know, and that's why the Apostle Paul even wails, oh, wretched man that I am. You know, the things I want to do are the things that I'm not doing, the things that I don't do are the very things that I, you know, want to do. And, and he's, he's wrestling within himself. Like, I'm, I, I, I find that I, I want to do good, but then there's a work in me, in my flesh, yeah. that's working against my spirit. And so in order to overcome this, no man can do it on their own. We, we couldn't save ourselves. We can't be good on our own. We definitely can't do the work that God's called us to do on our own. I mean, I can't pastor this church, you know? Yeah. And, and, and our founders couldn't pastor this church on their own. You know, this is a supernatural move of God. That means it was a grace that yeah. was upon a people to plant this, to launch this, to build this, to grow it. And, and now there's a, a, a supernatural grace on myself, yes, as the pastor, but on us as a body— <laughs> to continue that work and continue to build on the platform that was already laid for us. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's where, again, back to the individual, if you've got a saint that's called to their vocation, whatever that is in the world, and they're looking at how am I going to reach this community of people that God's called me to for Jesus, whether it's, you know, like we said, in business, in the marketplace, uh, you know, uh, it could be in government, it could be in education, entertainment, any, any of these different arenas that are on this planet. Um, even socially, neighborhood, all that kind of stuff. How am I going to reach these people for Jesus? I can't do it. Well, good. Yeah. You, you finally got to the place where God can move. So I love that because, you know, one of the things, as, as, as you had mentioned, even when we're talking about Paul, right? Paul understood that he boasted in his weakness, right? right. And I think that's where, you know, um, going back to when you talked about shouts of grace for this year, yeah. as we're looking at 2024, right? I know uh, understanding, oh, okay, there is going to be some definite need to yeah. lean into God yeah. for his grace. And I think that's where we as a people can, can get to an understanding that when we can't, it's not a bad thing yeah. because God can. Oh, for sure. Right. And that's where we lean in and trust in his grace. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you when you get asked at work to do something beyond your capability, right, this is where your capacity expands. Yeah. yeah. This is where now God can use. You've talked to me, Pastor Dan, um, about different areas where God graced you yeah. in different positions here at the church outside of your comfort. 
right? But definitely trusting in God and being able to get the job done yeah. and yeah. seeing him show up in that. Yeah. When I was the executive pastor, I, I found that, um, you know, it, it required some administrative skill, which I have none. And, uh, you know, I'm very creative. I love art. I love music. Uh, you know, I'm very relational. I'm an exhorter. Um, you know, love people and love being with people. That's, that's my bread and butter. That's, that's what excites me, you know, is, is being around people. I'm definitely an extrovert. People don't drain me. Um, they can, but uh, by and large, when I'm with people, I get more energy than I do uh, draining, you know. And so um, for me to, to sit behind a desk and do schedules or to, to look over, uh, you know, budgets and things like that, that I found myself as an executive pastor doing, that was draining me. And, and I, was, I was at a loss for what to do. I had people coming and sitting at my desk asking me questions that I didn't have answers to. And, uh, you know, I didn't have the ministry experience that I have now. But, um, you know, looking at that time frame, I remember just stopping and saying, hey, everybody just, you know, kind of give me a minute and uh, let's, let's not have any meetings right now, you know. And I took some time to pray and I just said, God, I can't do this. Um, you know, I need a gift. I need an administrative gift. Now, thankfully, God's placed gifts in the body. So at the time, Dr. Fred Adams was our administrator, and I leaned on him heavily. Um, you know, and, and many times I would be thinking about something, and I'd say, hey, what do you think about this? And he'd give me his perspective. And his mind is, is administrative. His gifting is administrative. And so he would see beginning to end the big picture and all of the cogs in the wheel on the way. You know, so he would often bring up things that I needed to think about because I wasn't thinking about that little piece here. I was thinking about the end only. Well, he was thinking about, well, in order to get there, you got to go through all these things, all these people, all these steps. And that helped me to think in those terms. But the neat thing was, was that as I got into that and as I, I prayed and asked God for that, he definitely graced me to be the executive pastor. Yeah. And where there was lack and where there was need, oftentimes he would make it up with that grace or with the grace of an individual that was there with me. Yeah. You know, and, and I and I love that because I believe that's the way that God wants us to live life. He doesn't want us to live isolated. He wants us to live in community and communion with one another. And especially as a body, we're working together. But at the same time, the grace on me was that I had the ability to, you know, look over complex things and look over systems and all that kind of stuff and have an understanding and to grow in that as well as to have a word from God and a peace from God hey, this is the decision. This is the way. Yeah. Right? You know, and, and I'm always grateful that at the time I wasn't the, the end all, you know, because I could take all that stuff and I could go to, to my pastor at the time and just say, hey, this is your decision. What do you think? You know, <laughs> but, I, but I, I needed to have the grace behind that to have everything in order so that yeah. when I took it to him, he could just look over it and say, yes, no, change it, whatever he needed to say, and then we'd go and make it happen. You know, one of the things you mentioned, Pastor Dan, um, that I that I really jumped out in my note taking uh, that I want to uh, bring up is you talked about right now you just mentioned peace, right? You can go into it having peace. And I think that's where God's grace can give you peace. Yeah. Right. And so you had said there is a difference between having peace with God and having the peace of God. Yeah. And so I, I really want to just uh, pull on that a little sure, bit because sure. that was such an a a profound statement. And I really want to make sure that we don't miss the heart behind that and understanding what God wants to do, the difference between peace with him and peace of him. Yeah. Peace with God is, is very simple because we understand that when we get saved, we have the peace with yeah. God. And, and if, if some of our listeners don't understand that you have to understand it in terms of the greater cosmic, I guess, uh, or, uh, overarching scale if you will, of the, the entirety of the spiritual realm and things like that. There is a war. Yeah. And a lot of times people don't understand that. There, there, there is a current, present war going on between the powers of darkness and God's kingdom of light, right? Uh, God created everything good. In heaven, the devil rebelled yeah. and fell. That's where the war began. Uh, sin, original sin, didn't start on the earth. It started in heaven. Sin was found in him, Right. Uh, and in pride, he was lifted up. Pride is a sin. And so the devil was cast out. And, uh, you know, that's, that's where, you know, you, you get scriptures like Jesus saying, I saw Satan fall like lightning. You get the, the revelation. Satan's cast to the earth, and he's coming after the, 
the uh, the seed of man and 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 all that stuff that we see. So there is a a spiritual war that's taking place. All of us, when we enter into sin on our own, we enter into that rebellion. And I think people don't think in those terms. Well, it was just a little white lie. It was just I was a kid, you know. Um, and and yet there is going to be an accountability. Obviously, when we're old enough to know what we're doing, and when we're making choices, we may not have ever bitten the forbidden fruit. Yeah. However, we still entered into sin, and because of that, we were separated from God and we died. Uh, again, Romans is going to talk about this. Um, it's a part of that that whole process that when when sin enters in, when there's a consciousness of it, we die. What does that mean? We're separated from God. Yeah. And that's where in that we're born into sin. Uh, Jesus told the the Jews of his day that you're of your father, the devil, he was sinning from the beginning. And so here we see that that we are a part of that war and that rebellion. We're we're at odds with God. The, there's a uh, a Bible word that you don't often hear outside of the Bible uh, in our current you know uh, culture and that sort of thing. But it's enmity, and it really means a war. You're yeah. at odds with God. And so when we say that you're desiring to have peace with God, what does that mean? That means that you're laying down your arms. You're saying that I'm no longer going to rebel. I'm going to give God all my heart and life. And when you're born again, now you have peace with God. Yeah. The war is over. Why? Because you're, you, the, the, the rebel died. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The rebel is dead, gone. That's the old man. But now a new man is raised up. Now you're a child of God, son or a daughter. Now you've got your father who is God, your brother who is Jesus, okay? Uh, that's what the book of Hebrews says, many brethren, right? We're, we're now heirs with Christ, right? Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. It's an amazing reality that we live in. And so many people as Christians stop at the peace with God. Yeah. In other words, I'm saved, but my life is in chaos. And don't step into peace of God in their life. Yeah. See, when you are a saint and you have the grace of God operating in your life, then there is a peace of God that you can experience. And we, we talked about the word shalom in the Hebrew, and really in the Greek it, it carries many of the same connotations. Not just serene surrounding, which many people think that's peace, is that there's nothing going on that's causing me any anguish or turmoil, that sort of a thing. Uh, or an absence of war, they think that's peace, right? That, well, that's peace with God, great. You, there's an absence of a war between you and God, but there's still a war with the enemy. Yeah. Now that you've switched sides, so to speak, now that you're on the right side, now that you're a child of God, guess what? Now the devil hates you. Yeah. And he's coming after you. So he's going to create this turmoil in your life. But if you know that you're a saint, you're separate, you're special, okay, you're holy, and you have the grace of God to accomplish God's will for your life, then that peace now is a part of your life. Why? Because we, we define it like this, nothing missing, nothing broken. There's a completeness, a wholeness. It, it involves health, prosperity. It, it involves having everything that you need and you're fully equipped for life. That's, that's what grace does, right? Yeah. And so because of that, you can experience peace in the midst of turmoil and chaos. You can feel like you're in serene surroundings. Yeah. Yeah. Because your eyes are fixed on Jesus. And I think understanding that because you as you mentioned in your message, because you have his grace, right. You can now live in his, his peace. peace. That's so amazing. Well, I know we're, we're, we're wrapped up on time. Um, okay, man, but that, that was, fast. it did go fast. It was amazing. Uh, so many amazing things. I, I highly recommend if you did not get, uh, to, to hear the whole message, you really need to go back because there's so much content that I didn't even get to. Um, and so, uh, but I, again, pastor Dan, very excited, to have you back yeah, it's good to at be the back. rock and uh, just really excited to be a part of this podcast with you. And, you know, one thing I do want to mention before we get off, uh, if you guys have been tuning in on YouTube to watch the podcast, you know, I know um, one of the, uh, the ways a lot of people listen to podcasts in the car, right? They want to listen. They want to go from point A to point B as they travel. So you can go to our rock church app and there is an icon that you can click on um, that has the rock life podcast right there, a thumbnail right on the main page, 
click on that. It'll bring you to the, uh, all of the podcasts and you can just listen. It's audio only. So you won't get in trouble for using your phone while you drive. There you go. Right. And you could just listen to the podcast on your way to work, on your way, travel, going to the store, whatever the case may be. Um, and just follow along with us. And again, these are so fun because we can take parts of the message that you hear and maybe, uh, you have so many more questions and we can, we can really just, uh, start peeling back and hearing the heart behind it. So just so amazing, Pastor Dan. Yeah, good stuff. Well, I would encourage everybody online that's listening, uh, you know, like, subscribe, share. Uh, make sure to tell someone about this, especially uh, people that are following the, the sermons. This is supplemental, and so it just gives you more, and, uh, you know, it's a great way to grow in the things of God. With topics like grace and peace, I mean, those are huge topics yeah. in the Scriptures. Being a saint, huge. And so, that we're, like you said, we're just scratching the surface today. But, yeah, good to be back with you guys, excited for the future, and uh, we will definitely be back again next week talking about more Scripture. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. Thank you for tuning in.